just being honest, I really didn't even want to be a barber. I, I just told all of my friends that I was only going to cut hair just to get me through college. Uh, I didn't see barbering as a career that was going to be something that I really valued and was enough to actually take care of the, my family the way I desired to take care of my family. But I started cutting hair early on because growing up poor, I went to the barber shop and my mom gave me a $20 bill. And the barber charged me two additional dollars for my mustache when I was in the sixth grade. She was under the impression that I took two dollars and actually went to the game store and the candy store and spent her money. So she was very upset with the fact that I didn't come home with ten dollars and I came home with eight. So she called the barber shop and the barber told her that it was two dollars additional for my facial hair because I was a very hairy individual early on. And from that point on, she bought me a pair of cordless trimmers just to do my mustache. But the barber who was shaping me up and giving me a haircut, he didn't make my front hairline straight. So I would take those trimmers and actually redo my front line. It got to the point where I got to high school, one of my buddies who was cutting hair, he actually let me cut his hair down. And once he let me cut his hair down, and I was already trimming up my edge up myself, so I said, I might be able to do my entire haircut. So all throughout high school, I was cutting my own hair. And then it started off with me just telling everybody the first time it's free, and I charged $4 for an outline and $7 for a haircut. And my grandmom's second floor front bedroom turned into my mini barbershop. I knew it was going to be something bigger than what I thought when I started to move the mouse pad over to make room for additional clippers. Because <laughs> it was the computer desk that was my barber station. <laughs> so that's when I started to know that it was something bigger than what I really uh, thought it would be. And then when I started to meet individuals that were in the music industry that ended up becoming clients, and as their careers started to grow, my career started to grow, I started to reality, see, see that barbering was going to provide me a life that no other career was going to provide me, and that was through the value of relationships. I honestly believe that the relationships that you develop as a barber cause your life to be much more valuable than any individual that even has four and five and ten times as amount of money as I do just because of what I can do. I get paid to be in places that other people got to pay a lot of money to be in. You know, The past four years, I've been traveling with Lady Gaga's tour. I traveled the world, I got paid to travel the world and actually enjoy the country all because of what I did with a pair of clippers. Accounting wasn't going to do that for me. Engineering wasn't going to do that for me. And nothing else that I said that was bigger than barbering was going to do that for me. So I had to eat my own words. I had to eat my own words, you know? So even this year, I'm about to tour the world again with Janet Jackson, you know? all because of barbering. A pair of clippers, I look down on, but now I'm known across the country for cutting hair. It's amazing, you know? I thank God for that. Well, here's the thing, I actually balance out how I'm gonna do the tours. I don't stay on the tours. What I do traditionally, I'll go three days. Like for instance, I'll be, I'll be in the city for three days, I'll work six hours, and I'll get to enjoy the city the rest of the time. It's an amazing experience, you know? It's an amazing experience. The beautiful thing is, on some of the trips I get to take my wife, so she gets a chance to experience some things as well. So three weeks from now, no, two weeks from now, she's gonna be with me on my London trip. Um, but I'll be out there for two weeks. But one of those weeks, she'll be out there with me. So it's not just for me, but my family can experience it as well. So it's a, it's a great, great thing. You know? It's a great feeling. Well, today we finished up the IBS trade show in New York. Um, I'm the lead educator with the Anders Clipper Company and we had an amazing time. We broke some of our sales records of our tools. We had some great educational classes. I personally had two classes this weekend and we worked the main stage. Um, there was an event here this weekend called Barbicon. I just won the award of Educator of the Year. I was humbled by that. Um, Barbershop, uh, BarbershopConnect.com is a, is a big global you know, conglomerate for barbers and they bring barbers from around the country all together. And uh, for me to be picked out of all the, all the barbers educators that he knows across the country you know it was uh, it's really humbling you know because I've been in the industry for a while I've been working with the Andes company since 2005 and the funny thing is I won a barber competition in 2005 and that's what got me onto the team and they told me in that day that I was only going to be working with the company for one year I won't borrow time bro in 2006 I was supposed to be done it's 2016 and I'm still there and now I had decided to lead educator it's an amazing experience you know I'm, tell I'm telling you, barbering is unlike any other profession. The more professional you treat yourself and you treat your customers, the more professional they're going to end up treating you. And the experiences that you end up having because of the relationships you end up cultivating can be endless. All you have to do is figure out how you can actually be a blessing to other people first through the craft 
and that in itself is going to open up doors. What I learned from a lot of musicians that I'll deal with, they all tell me they pick different people they're going to work on different tours with them based on not just how good they are, but how much people just want you to be around. Okay. Barbers are cool with everybody. Just think about it. The one person you probably have never had an argument with is the barber you've had for a long period of time. As, as upset as you've gotten with him, he may have taken your beard down a little bit too low, and you didn't say much except for next time, just let it, let it grow a little bit, you know? So that, that experience is, is, is amazing. It's amazing, you know? Well, the Andis Company, they have awarded me with Educator of the Year as well. Uh, I've won the Andis Fade Master Barber Competition before. Um, but I think the biggest award that I personally can get is when a student who's been to one of my classes has taken the information, utilized the information, and comes back and says, hey, Kenny, I'm making more money now because of the information that you gave me. That's my trophy. Because I started out as an educator, and I told a lot of people, I said, the only reason why I want to do it is because I want to change the, the culture of the industry. Because in an urban context, people viewed barbering as just something that's hood. Every barbershop sells drugs. Every barbershop sells CDs. They sell fitted hats. They play loud rap music. Everybody has their pants sagging. And there's a lot of cursing around kids. Like, that's what the, that's what the mindset is about the urban barber in, the, in, the, in that urban context. But I wanted to change that through what I had as a platform. Um, people actually know the Andes brand. The fact that I'm related to the Andes brand and associated with the Andes brand, it causes people to respect me. But then I actually earn additional respect based on the hard work and dedication. And my mindset that I've shared with everybody is, I always wanna make sure I identify what my deficiencies are, identify different people who can, who can help me overcome those deficiencies, which are mentors, and then my lifelong goal is to turn those mentors into fans. So if I can turn those mentors into fans, I know for a fact I can go to the next stage and be a different version of Kenny Duncan year after year after year, so that I always continue to gain additional value, and it becomes harder for the Andy's company to say, you know what? You're done. In 2006, I was supposed to be done. It's 2016. I don't think it's one, bro. And that's the crazy thing. I think each and every year, I look to have an, an, a, decent, a decent experience in life. And it just so happens to be that barbering has been the means of how things have happened for me. Um, the fact that I can actually take care of my family well, keep the wife home, keep the kids in a great school district, making sure that I'm putting them in a position where they can be better than I am, uh, it's helping me, you know, provide for my family to make sure I'm attaining my goals. Like that's that in itself is huge. But along the way, each step is to continue to gain additional experiences through the relationships I build all through barbering. Their family. You know, I'm I'm a one person. I don't like to put my name in lights. I don't like things that be all about me. I'd rather instead of me having the pie, owning the recipe selling a pie to everybody, but only being able to do what Kenny Duncan can do by himself, instead of me thinking like that, I'd rather figure out who is in my circle who can make a great crust. I want to figure out who in my circle can actually make a great filling, and who in my circle can actually be the best baker of that pie ever. And I just want to be the person that presents and, and sells that pie to the masses so that I can continue to grow my empire and I can help my friends grow their empire to the point where one friend has a, a factory that just makes graham cracker crust. Another one has an apple orchard because we make that many apple pies. And we have somebody else that has a company that even sells con conventional ovens just because we make that many pies. So if there's anything I'd like to say is that what I'd like to do is continue to associate myself with other brands and figure out how we can partner up together so that we can end up achieving the goals that we all want to achieve and utilize, utilize that platform that we have to have balance in life, to earn what we need to earn, as well as give back to who we need to give back to and provide for our families and create different, additional experiences. That's the goal. So even this year, my, my companies that I'm responsible with having relationships with, um, starting in April, I'll be the artistic director, director with PB Education Center. I have a relationship with the, the Reserva online appointment booking system. I'm a brand ambassador with them. I recently became a part of Laywright brand, uh, uh, Band of Barbers. I'm associated with a, a, a product called Exotics that has a, a traveling boutique barber trade show barber competition called the Hair Battle Tour, and we travel all over. I uh, become known as one of the lead judges or well-respected judges because all I care about is good work. I don't care about the names behind the guys that actually did it. I just, good work deserves to be 
res uh, respected, and that's it. And people know that I'm non-biased when I come to a judge to be a judge at a, at a competition, and that in itself has earned a lot of uh, earned me a lot of respect, because there's been some high-profile barbers that have been in competitions that I've judged, and people who didn't even know somebody else end up winning the competition because they just did better work. So I am a, my my own biggest critic, and I and I. I hurt myself. And I'm gonna tell you what it is. I actually continue to evolve, and every time I gain a collection of footage, I end up scrapping it because I continue to learn and continue to evolve and continue to grow. But this year, I said to myself, I can't continue to do so. So continue to follow KennyDuncan.com, and you'll see the announcements when the YouTube video, I mean channel, will launch that will have higher quality videos showcasing a lot of the things that I've learned over the many years I've been an educator. And one of the things I will say that will be different in comparison to the random videos that you'll find on YouTube is that I will be providing solid educational support with the instructional visuals that you will see. One of the things I love about barbering is that social media has put barbering on a new platform and has also shrunk the world where many different influences from all over can now be attained locally. The other thing is relationships with many different barbers are now developing and now there's some amazing ideas and products that are coming from it. So there's a lot of barber love. One of the things I always say about barbering is that it's like a universal, universal language that everybody speaks. We can speak different languages but when you see somebody with a pair of clippers in their hands, you know exactly what they're doing, you know what they're trying to achieve, and you appreciate what he's doing, and you can actually just nod and smile, and even if we spoke different languages, you'll know that I'm excited the fact that you did a great feed. And you can not even know that I'm saying that with words, but you can see my expression, knowing that I'm a barber too, and it unites us. Irregardless of our cultural differences, irregardless of our language barriers, it still brings us together. So which leads us to events such as uh, the different barber battles and even events like last night with Barbican and you know many different events that bring so many different people from different walks of life. I've personally seen areas of, of, of cities that were competing at one point come together and show nothing but barber love at different events that we call boutique barber trade shows. Now on the flip side I'm gonna tell you what I don't like about barbering right now. I don't like the fact that social media allows unjustified, unqualified individuals to become credible in a, in a particular topic without any type of validation for anybody who is credible. You can just create a channel, create a page, say who you are and say you're this and say you're that and naive individuals can believe it. But when it comes to what you actually see in reality it becomes a problem. Let me give you a case in point. There are individuals who are very popular but they don't make a lot of money actually cutting hair in their barbershops. And you can tell because a lot of barbers are using online appointment apps and I can go online and see the fact that you have 10 open appointments for today but you have 200,000 followers on social media and you're looking like you're a barber god. Things can be a facade very very quickly and very very easily based on what social media and YouTube can end up doing for some people so it's pros and cons with it it's all about you know how you use it you know you gotta you know eat the meat spit out the bone it's, it's it's a blessing and a curse type of thing so I love social media but then there's aspects that I don't like about it and that in itself has an effect on barbering it shrinks us but then it also allows people it's just no filter to cause people who shouldn't be rising to the top rising to the top I'm gonna tell you what's funny um, my relationship with a lot of barbers through me being an Andes educator became you know, I became well known just because of that. Uh, a few years back, I was teaching a class in Atlanta. I met a guy named Wyatt Belton. Wyatt Belton, at the time, he was the barber for the movie Hunger Games. And he was on break and he came to the class and he said, I just want to learn some tips. He told me the truth. He said, I'm a hairstylist. I'm really not a barber, but I got hired through the union to be a barber and I'm doing this, but I need to learn how to do some things better. That's why I'm here for this class. Since that day, we've connected. We were cool. We were tight. And Aside from that, a random hairstylist from the area who just knew of who I was got an opportunity to work on the movie first. Wyatt Belton was hired to be the barber for the set. 
Michael B. Jordan was hired to be the lead, one of the lead actors for the movie. Wyatt Belton and Michael B. Jordan had an amazing relationship because they were involved with The Wire. So they had a long-term relationship because Michael B. Jordan was Wallace from The Wire. Yeah, so they had an amazing relationship. But one of the things that became a challenge was the amount of workload that Wyatt Belton had with the rest of the crew and the key needs that Michael B. Jordan was going to have. So even though they had a good relationship, it still became an opportunity for Michael B. Jordan to have a personal barber for that particular movie. So, on set, the lead hairstylist named Rita Perillo contacted Carla Clarkson, who was the local hairstylist that was hired to do Tessa Thompson's hair. She asked her, do you know any good local barber who can do some amazing haircuts? I was just one of the people that she ended up listing on the list. She sent me a text message asking me, can I send her my bio? Can I send her some uh, my, my resume uh, and making sure that you know it's well-rounded? I said, no problem. As soon as we got off the phone, I sent it to her. Next thing that happened was she sent me a text message saying, they're looking at your Instagram now. Rita Perillo or Wyatt Belton is going to call you soon. She didn't know that I knew Wyatt. So as soon as she texted me, I called Wyatt and I said to him, Wyatt, you're in my town. If you call somebody else to do this project, I'm going to be upset. He's, movie production is supposed to be top secret. I'm not even supposed to be knowing this information. So he's responding. He's like, what do you mean? He says, what are you talking about? I said, somebody told me that you're in town and you're looking at my Instagram right now. He says, who told you that? I said, Carla Clarkson. He says, hold on a second. And he goes over to Rita, which is the key hairstylist for the movie. He says, Rita, do me a favor. Do you have a list of barbers that you're actually looking at right now? She says, yes. She says, how many? He says, how many is on there? She said, 10. He says, is Kenny Duncan on the list? She says, yes. He says, do me a favor. Cross every name off and only keep Kenny Duncan. And I'm going to tell you the reason why he did this. When we met years ago in Atlanta, I told him, if he can help me get into movies, I'll make sure I help him learn how to be a better barber than what he is. We, here's his opportunity to not only learn from me, but have me cutting right next to him. So while he's cutting Wood Harris, I'm cutting Michael B. Jordan. While he's cutting all the other individuals in the movie, I'm cutting Tony Bello. So there was multiple opportunities for, him, for us to grow and learn off each other because he taught me a lot. Like He's one of my mentors. He's taught me a lot, especially when it comes to protocol, how to engage, how to treat people, better quality customer service. He opened my eyes to a lot of different things that I did not know before. And we actually worked together to help share our, uh, our personal, you know, uh, what we feel as though are the things that are pet peeves, the things that's on the forefront of what we do. I'm more of a precision barber. He's the one that's big on customer service. So he helped bring balance to me. I helped bring balance to him and we both end up being better off because of that relationship. So that's how I ended up getting in, and what ended up impressing Michael B. Jordan was this story here. The first day I got in, I didn't even know that the movie he did previously, which was Fantastic Four, the barber that was, he was used for that particular movie was one of my students. His name is Richard Payne. He goes on social media by Captain Smash. What happened was, one of my barbers in my barbershop let me know that Richard Payne was his barber for the previous movie. So before I got a chance to go on set, I called him. I said, hey, I need insight on how to cut Mike's hair. I want to make sure I do a great job. He immediately got upset and got quiet. He says, Mike just texted me and asked me to come to Philadelphia to be the barber for that movie. And I was going to call you and ask you, can I work in your shop while up in Philadelphia? Because they wasn't going to pay me enough money for me to feed my family while up there. I said, are you serious? He paused and said this to me. He said, Kenny, since MySpace, I've been showing clients pictures of your work and asking them, can I duplicate your work? So the fact that you're calling me to ask me, how can I do a, How can you do a haircut? He says, that makes me not even be mad anymore. So you know what? I'm going to tell you. And we started chopping it up and started telling him. So my first day on the trailer, working with Mike, he was reluctant. He really didn't want me to cut his hair. He was very, very, you know, passive. He didn't, he was trying to make up different excuses why he didn't want to get his hair cut. And when I said to him these keywords, I said, if you're worried about continuity, me and Richard have talked, and I know it's everything he, he used, 
And here's the thing that you didn't know. He's a barber from Louisiana, but he's on YouTube having videos that says he want to show you how to do a Philly fade. For years, he's been coming to classes at big trade shows, such as where we at now, the IBS New York, and he's learned many different things from a barber from Philly and taking them back to Louisiana, so much so that he's willing to make videos talking about how you can do a Philly fade. So once I said that, he looked at me with his blank eyes and said, all right, like he had no more excuses. And what was even funnier was this. After the first day I cut him, there was a, a bar, I mean, there's a guy named Tony Bello that got a haircut by Wyatt Belton. He wasn't 100% satisfied with the style. It's not to say Wyatt can't do it, it was just every barber has different styles. So he's seen some of my work. So he wanted me to cut his hair, but I couldn't do it because I was on my way out to the IBS International Trade Show in Long Beach. So I told him I couldn't do it. But before that, there were two of Michael B. Jordan's friends that I cut right before I left. And I was able to give them amazing haircuts. And when I gave these guys amazing haircuts, what happened was the guys ended up going back on set and different people ended up seeing those haircuts and that gave me additional opportunities to service more individuals. So the opportunity continues to grow just based on hard work and dedication, we were looking to actually make other opportunities. But one of his friends was trying to get two other barbers in to be the barber for that movie because Richard Payne was having issues getting to Philadelphia because of the pay. He had told me the first time I cut his hair, he says, a guy named John usually cuts my hair. I said, who's John? I may know him. He said, he's from LA. I said, funny thing is, I just came from a barber battle out in LA. We had 1,500 barbers in a room. I just may know this John that you're talking about. What's the barbershop name that he works at? He says, I don't know. He said, but he goes on Instagram by the guy, by the name of Popular Nobody. I said, Popular Nobody is one of my best friends. I said, I'm so much of a fan of his, I'm trying to get him hired by the Andes Company this weekend. This weekend in Long Beach is his first day trying out for the Andes team, and it's because of me being a big fan of him and being a big advocate of him. He says, are you serious? I said, I'm dead serious. I said, if you don't believe me, just call him and ask him. He didn't want to do it. He just took a picture of me and then sent it to John. And John's response was, you're in good hands. I didn't know that he was trying to get him to be a part of the movie. He had no clue at all. The same guy also has another home in Atlanta because he does productions in Atlanta. And he's tied to one of my other good friends named Marcus Harvey. He's an amazing barber. He's the barber for Nas. He tells me after a while, yeah, we were trying to get Marcus to be a part of this too. I said, do you realize that the three people that you wanted to bring on, not only are my friends, but all three of these guys would consider me to be like an uncle. That's exactly what the type of relationship I have with a lot of barbers in this industry. Not to say that I've done a, a lot of things for a lot of different barbers. I, I'm not big headed. I'm not going to take credit for a lot of that. But I will say this one. Everybody has an uncle that at the very least, they remember it from a family reunion saying one thing to them. Whether it been about girls, whether it been about how you dress, they said one thing to you and it's changed how you thought about that one thing and it affected you for the rest of their life. There's a lot of barbers out here that would tell you, I may not have done the world for them, but it's one thing that they've learned and that's impacted them, helped change that one thing within their life. And these three guys will go on record and say those things. And I tell them, I said, listen, you was going all around the world and those three guys will tell you that I can do that job and you were going all around the world to try to get somebody to fly in and I'm right in the backyard. Only reason why Wyatt Belton didn't even know that I was in that area, because we knew each other from flying around in different trade shows and never did he know that I lived in Philadelphia. That's the only reason why he didn't call me. Well, here's what happened. Um, a few years back, I started to aggressively focus on the barbering technique of clipper over comb. And as I dove deep into clipper over comb, I started to realize that the different tensions of the teeth of the comb will always be necessary to have a wide variety, which was lacking in the industry. And the other thing I knew was that the issue was there isn't a lot of quality white combs. Carbon fiber is black. So a lot of the quality combs were darker colors, but all of the white combs that were great for cutting were always made of cheap materials that didn't last a long time. So I see the issue I wanted to fill a void. So through partnerships, through the different relationships that I've built over the years being a barber, 
Uh, we came up with the idea of creating a, a, a cutting comb collection. I have six different combs, a wide, a wide range from a, a barber taper comb to a flat top comb with tighter tensions of teeth than you've ever seen before, but all with quality materials that's even heat resistant, that it even can be styled with. Instead of using brushes, you can actually use a K. Duncan collection comb. It's amazing. But I also have a series of different wooden razor holders because I became a fan of the Feather razor holder, but the Feather DX razor that I was using is a $300 razor. It's amazing. I love it. But I know a lot of barbers who can't afford $300 for a razor. They're paying $5 for a razor from a local beauty supply store, and it's cheap and it's falling apart. They end up using some type of tape to keep it together, and it looks tacky. So what I wanted to do was create something that's highly functional, but yet fashionable, because I wanted to make sure that I have designed, hand-carved wooden handles that look beautiful, but highly functional with different uh, features on it that allow you to actually have some type of small benefit. So that was a project I've entered into for, I want to say, at least a year and a half now, and it's been going really good. Thus far, I'm in about 50 stores with the razors, and I'm in uh, 200 stores with the combs. And the future, I don't know what it holds, but I would tell everybody, just pay attention to KennyDuncan.com because you can order your products through that website. You also can read in many, any different blogs that I create on barbering, and you can actually be aware and up to date with all the information that's going to be coming soon and is already happening with Kenny Duncan. Make sure you're willing to be honest with yourself. Make lists of the things you really need to focus on growing in and be open to people who are helping you grow. Because the key to life is not necessarily, or the key to success in life is not necessarily you by yourself or you judging yourself by yourself. Your success is solely dependent upon the potential of the people that's around you. So you have people around you that have experienced more and know more and can help you grow more. That's gonna help you be a better version of who you are. And all the different opportunities, you'll just be prime, ripe, and ready for when the opportunity even comes because of your prior work and diligence. Don't chase after these things. Those things will end up coming to you. I didn't chase working on movies. I didn't chase working with different uh, musicians. You know, I've worked with a long list of musicians. I work with Maxwell. I work with Justin Timberlake. I work with um, uh, Music Soul Child. I work with Mario the Singer. I work with a lot of people. Jeremiah, I worked with a lot of people. I didn't chase any of it. All I did was focus on how I can become a better version of myself and those opportunities end up opening up. And keep in mind, in this industry, the reality is, the people who are the better servants are the people who end up getting the better serving opportunities. This is what barbering is. We serve people. And some people have it the other way around. They think that the clients are there for them. No, we are there to serve the clients. And if you become better at serving clients locally, I guarantee you, you'll definitely be prime record ready to serve clients internationally. And as, as Sig Ziglar would put it, the more you help people achieve what they want to achieve, they will also help you achieve what Definitely you want to so. And I think that kind of encapsulates everything that you've said. Definitely so. Two, two sentences. Kenny Duncan, it was an absolute pleasure interviewing you and picking your brains and getting the words of wisdom and I'm sure everyone who watches this interview will be as highly as will be as uplifted as I am and motivated. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time.